and welcome back to Worlds 2021, where we are about to see Rogue take on Damwon Kia to uh, see who comes out of today at the top of this group. Of course, both these teams won yesterday. Damwon with a dominant performance versus FPX, and Rogue with a less dominant but still pretty strong performance. Hey, that was a dominant. Time. Okay, it was okay, a is dominant. That, is that, it's dominant. Listen, chat. I need a lot of hopium right now. Okay? <laughs> just, just get the hopium going, all right? Uh, no, I, I, I gotta be. I gotta be unbiased on against the cash. You know what I mean? Oh, and now here you go. It's gone. It's all gone. We're in for a really exciting game between Rogue versus Damwon. The last time that they met, it was quite down one favored. It was quite down one favored. Um, but obviously, they are quite different teams now, moving into 2021. But as Medic just said, Dan One did look very convincing yesterday. They will be on the red side, and already they're showing their respect towards Larson in the mid lane with the Twisted Fate being removed. Irelia on the side of Rogue, with Trindamir actually being banned away on the side of Rogue as well. Yeah, and with the Ayumi getting removed by Darmon themselves, obviously they think that perhaps Rogue would go for a first pick Ayumi here for Trin. Uh, for I Trin think B. it's meta now, dude. I think you just got to accept so it. I think that... I'm a dog person, Betty. <laughs> I mean, you know, doesn't your girlfriend have cats? Yeah, no. she's, she's not watching. She's at work. It's fine. Uh, all right. So with the Draven being removed as well. Um, I'm looking at other potential things that could be up and available. We haven't really seen things like... We've seen Lee Sin banned, but Zin has been getting through the draft quite a lot. We obviously haven't seen a huge amount of priority on things like Kiana or Talon, but we know that they are always available. Yesterday, we did see the Kiana come out from Inspired with Odo Omni, actually bringing out the Rumble, uh, one of his old school favorites. Obviously, the man's been playing for a while now, um, but champions like Jace, Kennen, and uh, Rumble were actually some of his old go-tos. In any case, the Lee Sin is going to be removed from the board. So I imagine, given that this is Rogue, Lucian is going to be the priority. And uh, yeah, that's likely going to go into the hands of Han Summer, as we don't really see Lucian mid lane all that often. And then the immediate response likely to be the Aphelios for the side of Darmon. Not really too surprising that Misfortune is up and available too, if they want it. Um, but I think that the, the Aphelios makes a lot of sense. It definitely does. Getting Ghost and AD carry that can work well in team fights alongside that Showmaker's Rise would be a very strong pick here. Of course, Larson comfortable on the Twisted Fate, but with that band away, Rise really the only of those champions that has the roaming ability from the mid lane. Larson might fall back to one of his more traditional majors in this match. Well, yes, uh, Oriana is sort of what you expect to be picked into this matchup. Larson is a very prominent Oriana player, and it does give you a lot of control, but perhaps they want something a little bit more team fight focused. Of course, focusing in on the bottom side of the map, Nami still very prominent, in particular when paired with the Lucian, uh, and so they're gonna have a very powerful two versus two into the bot side of the map. But Damwon seem to be responding with a scaling bot side of their own. While the Lucian army gives you a lot of lane prowess, Aphelios plus Lulu gives you an insane amount of late game power, uh, given your ability to protect the Aphelios, especially if he goes for the shield bow early on. So Damwon already preparing themselves for more of a team fight style. Uh, and we talked about the Oriana as an answer into the rise from Larson, and that is likely what he has going to go for. So we move into the second phase. Darmon now have their eyes on pinching the jungle port a little bit more. And remember that they do have the first pick here. So they can remove things like the Kiana. They can also remove things like the Xin Zhao if they want to. And they could lock themselves in the Jarvan. And as they say that, it's actually <laughs> Rogue that are banning that one away. So Rogue agree. They say, you know what? Let's limit the jungle port. Let's see what both junglers have at their disposal. But in spite of saying this to Canyon, <laughs> um, he has a world skin, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that I have a lot of confidence in Canyon when it comes to um, his champion pool and what he has at his disposal. The question is, what will it be? You imagine it'll be an AD jungler. Uh, we do still have the Zin up and available, unless Rogue choose to ban it. Of course, the Talon is still up and available as well. I do wonder if the Talon pick is more of a, we have a Yumi on our team so we can constantly buff the Talon up as he looks for fights, or whether it's a pick that is used in different scenarios. The Zin banned away, so as you say, Talon an option here. Darmon could of course look for a top laner and then save their jungle for counter pick. But they do have the option of going towards that Talon and will be locked in. So Darmon here very happy to take that. And they do have 
an enchant to support anyway. So that Lulu can work well with the talent as the game goes on. Well, I also just think that Gore Drinker talent is just really strong. And you look at Rogue's composition right now, that's three squishy champions, all of which talent is more than happy to play into. So I think that down one's pretty happy with what they've drafted for themselves right now. I'm really curious as to what the answer is from Rogue. Of course, this grave still a flex pick. We don't quite know where it is going as of yet. So let's just hold off and see where things go for the time being. Right now, Rogue going for a... Oh! <laughs> no! No way did you just lock in Fiddle She's six. locked in Fiddle <laughs> against Canyon's Talon? <gasps> Well, you could have another opportunity. Yeah. Oh, voice is ready. <laughs> I, just, I get the gospel <laughs> sounds coming out. Of course, uh, inspired a very well-known fiddle player here in Europe with one of the iconic plays from summer season in the LEC with incredible Crow Storms turnaround game against Misfits. Darm one will lock in the Jax top to deal with this Graves. Now that we see the full compositions, Vedius, tell me what you think. I mean, I just really like Darm one's calm, you know? I feel like, sure. When you actually look at the lanes, your expectations are Orianna does very well into Rise. Not at like level one, but once you get level two, three, a couple more levels under your belt, Orianna starts to win out on that matchup and should be able to get Pryo. Uh, in the bot lane, you also expect Rogue to have the 2v2 Pryo. Um, but when you get into the late game, like I think it's gonna be really difficult to be able to ma uh, match the jacks on sides. I think that this talent against this very squishy comp overall is gonna have a field day roaming around and looking for picks and kind of shadowing that Jax in a side lane. Uh, and then also you have Showmaker on Rise who's gonna constantly be looking to roam around the map. So I think that the biggest thing that Rogue needs to take advantage of is something that they did do a lot during the regular season was trying to take advantage of your strong laning phase. You do have some strong laning champions, but is Fiddle really the champion that's gonna help you snowball in that early game? I think it's a bit of a gamble. Of course, you know that they're gonna have some strong team fighting press. Orianna Shockwave combined with the Fiddle Ultimate is something that you definitely can't afford to underestimate, but yeah, I feel like that Rogue is saying, you know what, we have champions that we're comfortable on. We have champions that we have confidence on. Uh, and so let's see how they do against the reigning world champions in Damwon. It's a Herculean task for Rogue here, but a win would very much put them in contention to get out of this group. With FPX losing to Damwon yesterday, uh, Rogue getting a win here would put them up towards that second seed position. I mean, it would put them first on the day, but I'm not, I haven't got that much euphoria <laughs> coming on, okay? <laughs> Expectations are that Damwon and FPX should still be favorites to get out of this group. Damwon starting down towards the bottom lane, We'll set up, set up a full five man and on summer playing in a relatively safe position here in the tribush. Even if Darmon push forward, he should be able to back away. Obviously has no vision of them as of yet. And as they come around the corner, he'll spot Khan, start to walk his way away. Khan's still looking to see if Han Summer stayed, but he doesn't. Darmon will actually push in towards this red buff, Betty. Darmon's main intent here is to get information on where the fiddle is starting. It's really important. So. Interesting thing about Fiddle, of course, Fiddle actually has a, a, a very fast gone. clear speed because you can clear two camps at the same time, right? That's one of his biggest strengths uh, and something that can make him very difficult to deal with. In terms of his early dueling, he's also deceptively strong because not only does he get the lifesteal from his W, he also has an execute at the end of the channel if you're able to fully channel it. So he's not someone that you can afford to underestimate, uh, but he is someone that because of his low mobility, you can actually look to try and take advantage of in the early jungle matchup. And by dropping this early ward, Canyon has information that for now, Inspired is not starting on the bot side of his map. Whereas it looks to me like Inspired right now is doing both his blue and his wolves. Uh, and he is likely going to be clearing both of those together. And then he can choose to go over to do his prom if he wants, or he can immediately move towards the bot side of them. Or he can do both of those together as well. Yeah. So as you're seeing, this is why Fiddle's clear speed is actually very, very fast. And he's pathing towards the bot side of the map where with a Lucian army, you expect to get early prior, uh, largely because of how strong this duo can trade in lane. But I kind of expect whoever gets that level two first, which for now looks like it's going to be damn or will have control for the time being. Yeah, they should be able to push back Hansama and Trimby in the lane. Rogue's strength predominantly through the LEC was 
getting early leads, getting a strong laning advantage against teams and then being able to snowball that or slowly suffocate their enemy teams out of the game here of course against Darmon against the reigning world champ it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get those individual laning advantages well you say that for the time being Odo does have the push in top lane Canyon has gone for a very fast level 3 clear where he has gone from red into Raptors into Gromp he will be spotted out here both smite's going to come off at the same time and Canyon will secure it so buff stolen there by the Darmon jungler he's going to look for more as he goes across towards the Krux bot lane pushed in underneath the tower Hunt Summer and Trimby trying to defend. Double TP's coming out. And uh, it looks like it will all be for naught. Showmaker getting chased out just a little bit. Larson putting some damage down as well, but Darm one just get a TP for TP trade. But I think Canyon overall is pretty happy with this. And I think what's really great about the TP from Showmaker is it makes it even harder for Han Sama. Ooh, hang on. Flash done. And Odo Omni has to try and flash away, but Khan is still on the chase. No flash for either of these. One more auto attack would be enough. The end of the line is the end of the lane for Odo Omni as he falls to Khan in the 1v1. And Khan just finds himself a solo kill onto Odo Omni. So even though he had so much pressure in the lane early on, Khan is able to find a small window where he can punish him and he ends up getting a huge advantage he's likely going to be forced to tp back into this lane but dom one stealing away the red buff investing the early tp into bot forcing the bot lane of rogue to lose a couple of cs and also stealing camps away from inspired and just making his life difficult look you can see canyon is going to double crab him right now largely thanks to the fact that odo also just died and the prio that showmaker was able to get in mids the advantage is going in the jungle favor of the canyon. The advantage is going in the favor of the bot lane. The advantage is going in favor of the top lane. Already, Darwin is getting a huge early advantage. Kind of as to be expected, let's be honest. Darwin, one of the best laning teams in the world. That team fighting is nothing to snuff that either as Inspire tries to steal away these wolves. Showmaker will find him as he goes around the corner. Showmaker is going to be able to get Hot the move here down in a second, but the wolf stolen there by the Darwin mid laner. And Rogue very much on the back foot in the early game here. 700 gold behind. Damwon are just walking them all over the map. You can see that kill lead in the top lane, a 10 CS lead down towards the bottom side against a lane that is meant to be dominant in the laning phase. You know, Lucian Nami is picked for its aggressive early laning. Well, that was my expectation, but perhaps my read on the 2v2 was just incorrect because the way Ghost and Barrel are playing this right now is just absolutely flawless as they continue to pressure in the bot. Now, Canyon will be caught in his... Oh, wow, that's a lot of yeah, I think Odo Omni might be caught here for the second. Canyon can always just jump across this wall. Odo Omni down to half HP, forced back. Remember, he doesn't have TP to get back to this lane. Khan holding it in a pretty strong position as now they will try and crash this wave in. Three, well, two and a half minion waves. Going to be underneath the tower here. Khan dives in. He'll take a single tower shot, but Odo Omni. 200 HP in a dream for him to defend this top tier yeah, one. He's at risk of getting dive now. He doesn't have the flash available. He doesn't have the TP. That's a wave stacking in Karnas level six. So much is being lost simply because Odo died in that one versus one. Larson Inspired is trying to come around and help him. But look, Inspired still level three. His entire top side was stolen. He couldn't actually steal enemy jungle camps on the bot side of the map because of the pressure that Ghost and Bell consistently had in the wave. Dam one is just absolutely dominating every part of the map and there's nothing that Odo can do about it. It's just beautiful play from Dam one the number one seed from the LCK are just walking Rogue around the map. And we talked about how Rogue got early leads in the LEC. That's how they play. That's how they got their advantages here against Darmon. They are just not winning out in any lane whatsoever. Canyon has been everywhere. Showmaker has been everywhere. And already there's a 1,200 gold lead for Khan in the top I lane. Mean, tops this, over, like, tops Jax, over. Jax has it's... scaled already and we're six minutes into the game. He's, he's so far ahead and I love the way in which Canyon and Showmaker played around that as well because it was it was just really well done. They took advantage of the stacked wave. They knew that Odo had no flash. They know that he has no TP. And look, Khan knows that he has a two level advantage who's going to zone him away as much as he can. Odo will finally be able to get to his tower. Maybe now he can get his level five, but the damage has already been done. Like, I mean, it's Three plates at six minutes, or two and a half plates at six minutes. Khan taking up a couple of tower shots here, but Odo Wamre doesn't realize or doesn't think that he can chase a level down on the Darm One top laner who can now back away twice the CS for this Jackson. Darm One just in total control of this game. 1,700 gold ahead. And I think some of the, uh, the euphoria that perhaps we had after Rogue were able to take down C9 yesterday has been well and truly quelled in this first seven minutes of this game. Well, yeah, it's looking pretty dominant for Darwin in this early game. They played the lanes extremely well. And admittedly, Hansama and Trimmy, they've been able to keep the bot lane CS equal. 
Um, but usually what you expect from this two versus two is just a lot of aggression, a lot of trading, trying to leverage the fact that you have a heal so that you can keep trading your HP back and forth. But we've got to draw attention back to the jungle because Cannon's like, hey, yeah, look, Showmaker's up my back. I know we can collapse on this. Let's steal away more buffs. There's a realm more coming in. Showmaker just wants to force Inspired underneath this tower. Canyon will take away the Grump. The blue did reset, but Canyon can just walk across to it now. And Inspired, he just hasn't been able to farm his own jungle. Something that Rogue do very well is when Inspired's able to get, you know, a first full clear when he's able to get towards that level six. He can be such a strong influence on the map, but Dalmon have been so good at shutting him down, went for that red invade, now going for the blue invade. Hansama trying to force Ghost back here. There's the root coming out from the Gravitum and goes very safe in this bottom lane. This is also what we were talking about in the draft, right? Like, the, the risk of this fiddle pick is how you can abuse it when you have this ability to collapse. And Larson is doing what he can to try and assist, but the moment that they go and assist Inspired, look who gets punished on the other side of the map. It's Odo Omne, who's now getting dived by Khan. Smokescreen will stop Khan in his tracks for the moment, but with the wave pushing in, as you say, Khan has flash auto attack. Thwack, thwack, thwack goes the Jackson. Down goes Oda Omne once again. That's a second solo kill. Khan is playing the, w the, the lane perfectly right now. Hansam is trying to get something back in the bot side of the map, but the, you're now facing the problem of how do you deal with this Jax later on into the game. The reality is that he is already proving to be a powerful side lane threat, and he's only going to be harder and harder to deal with as the game progresses, even if the other lanes are doing okay. Look at all this topside vision control that Darmon have as well. They're just, every time, and, and it's just, it's the, the way in which they use Canyon and Khan together, because Khan got that solo kill, okay? And that was good, but it's what they were able to get off the back of that that was so devastating for Rogue because Canyon was like, okay, I can invade here, I can point a pressure here. Oh, Odo Amne wants to collapse? Okay, fine. That's cool. I'll just leave then because I'm yeah. Talon. And so, uh, and then the moment you try and collapse, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to invade your bot side. Oh, now you have no one who can help Odo. So now Khan no, is going to just down, run yeah. him down. It's just, there's so many points of pressure on the map right now that Rogue just don't have any answers. And a lot of it comes off the back of Khan getting this solo kill. And, I think that as a player, Khan, there have been a lot of question marks around him. In particular, he didn't have the strongest season. He did have a very strong playoffs, in my opinion. Uh, and I think that many people say that Darmon is weaker because what Noguri was to that team last year is not what uh, Khan is to this team. But to sit there and say that like Khan is any kind of weak link, I think would be a big stretch. Uh, and I think that he's still someone that you can very much rely on to be a carry, especially if you give him the opportunity. Definitely can. Canyon looking for Inspired here once again. Gets forced back with the fear there, but Canyon has a lot of damage. Shadow Assault still available for him. Larson coming in from the side as well. Shockwave not used. There's a Shadow Assault. Oh, do I want to try to chase down Canyon, who will flash across the wall and then can this just Chan dash man. across yeah, this the next Chan one. It's so annoying. But this is exactly what we were talking about in draft, right? It's just, so they're giving him Talon, and then they're picking Fiddle as their answer into the Talon. Look, Betty, uh, my, I don't know why, okay? <laughs> my ideas about why they did this haven't changed in the last 10 minutes. You did say, how will they deal with the Jax when he scales? I've worked out one way. The game's not going to scale. Like, this, this, is, this is Darmon versus G2 all over again. We're going sub-20, possibly, on this game if Darmon keep this pace up. 3,000 gold ahead. And I will say, looking back to last year, this was kind of to be expected in the two games they played. At 15 minutes on average, Rogue were 4,000 gold behind. They got one Drake in the entirety of it. The average, the game, average time game was 29 It was the minutes. same. It was 29 minutes as Inspired looks for a fight in the mid lane. Show make it able to flash away. So that is Inspired's first gank of the game. Flash invested from both Inspired and Larson in exchange for Showmakers, and they don't get anything off the back of it. Now, Ghost and Barrel looking to fight. And someone could try and turn this one around. He does dash back forward, and there's the cut, and Ghost has to flash. One more auto would be enough. Help picks coming out the tidal wave. A little bit to the side, and Ghost will be able to retreat. And someone not wanting to invest a flash to try and get those final couple of autos down. Well, he knows that Barrel still has the ultimate up and available. But that is going to be the Herald dropped in the mid lane as well. Oh, Beryl overstepping just a little bit there. But given that the, uh, the Fiddle ultimate was just used in the mid lane, Showmaker and Canyon now know that the risk of that in mid is, well, gone. Yeah. So that means that they can drop this Herald, they can secure themselves a bunch of plates, they know that Khan is already winning top lane, Oduwamne has to back off because his jungler is nowhere near, and there's no way that he can defend this tower. Oh man, this Jax is so bad. <laughs> I mean, it's incredibly well played by Darmon. Obviously, being an LEC fan and watching Rogue lose like this, 
is a little bit disheartening, but they can bounce back. Darmwon continue to show just why they are seen as one of, if not the best team in the world right now, taking down former world champions FBX yesterday in a dominant fashion and looking to do the same against Rogue here. Trimby dies towards the bottom side, Inspire's gonna get caught out, Room Prison coming down, and Khan, he's here for another one, gets his third kill of the game, a killing spree for the Jex, and Darmwon, four kills to nil, up a 5,000 gold lead at the 30 minute mark. About two minutes quicker than last year. Shockwave coming out, Khan able to get across it. And there's the taunt, and there's the stun, and there's the rampage for Khan. Making a statement for himself this world before he likely goes off to military service after this year. It is an absolute slaughter, Medic. Yeah. It is it just all across the board. Darmon is completely demolishing Rogue. And now it's Khan counter jungling. He's like, you know what, Canyon? You, you take your jungle. I I'll take theirs. <laughs> it's fine. What are they going to do? There's no way they can stop him. Inspired has just been completely shut down in this early game. Canyon, just such great awareness of how to deal with this fiddle pick uh, and, and managing it perfectly. I think it's something you brought up earlier as well. I was wondering about whether the Talon would be as powerful without a unit, right? Because you don't have that Bruiser plus Enchanter combination in a lot of these fights. And that's why we saw it shine so well yesterday for Ona. But what Talon does really well, especially into a jungle like Fiddlesticks, is get in and out of the jungle really easily. He and so you can- a lot of pressure, yeah. right? And uh, he can do it in lane too, you know? He can just walk in lane, threaten the gank, he can overstep because he can then use the ability to just dive out. And that's also why many junglers even run Ignite in that yep. lane, right? Because it gives you even more early game power. And if he had run Ignite, then he has kill threat on this fiddle in the enemy jungle as well. And his pathing was all about trying to shut down the fiddle. He went from red to raptors to gromp to give himself the fastest level three. He then immediately invades, steals away the enemy red buff, just everything so well executed in the bot lane. They get themselves a 2v2 kill. Top lane finds themselves a 1v1 kill. And while Larson is holding his own in the mid lane, it's just Showmaker being like, well, I don't care. I'm gonna roam around the map. Uh, and now he finds himself with the CS advantage as well. So just absolute domination across the board. And at this point, it's just, it's a, it feels like it's a matter of time. Oh, 100%. You know, the, the game feels I, like- I will be honest, it's felt like that for the last eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> After those two solo kills in the top lane, I was done with this game. Like, we knew the result. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's tough, obviously, you know, because you want to try and give reasons as to the way in which they can come back into this game, but- Oh, they're looking for a fight here as Canyon is called out. Shadow Assault into the first hop. And that's not enough damage. The collateral damage was not enough. Canyon able to escape. Both ults invested. We did see Odawamne at half of Khan's gold right now uh, on this Graves. And he's got, you know, 99 CS, but he's already... <laughs> he's got 99 CS, but more than Khan is not one. That doesn't really work, does that it? Doesn't there's, there's one, there was really one there, and I that. couldn't get it. Yeah, it wasn't that, yeah. wasn't it? But good effort. Forced it like Rogue had been forcing these plays. Again, no, you need to stop. Okay, I'll yeah, stop. Yeah. I'm trying I to find some, some humor in this game, Benny. It's like laughing through the pain, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's a happy face in front of the crying yeah. one on the meme. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, this is what we expected, though. When, yeah. when you look at Dan one, they are heavy favorites to make it out of this group. The reason why it was called the group of death was mainly because Rogue and Cloud9 were expected to die. Uh, and, you know, in the event that Rogue was able to get a win here, it would have, like, really shaked up the group and it could have made things very, well, very, very crazy. But Darwin just came into this game and they asserted their dominance. I really like what they did with the draft. Uh, I think that the way in which they executed it was extremely clean as well. Uh, and you just kind of, like, all of these things that analysts have been saying, you can kind of really see coming to fruition. And I think for many EU fans, they also looked at Inspired and be like, hey, you know, he was our regular season MVP. He was someone that touted as being a very smart jungler. Um, and Canyon's just put him in the dirt, right? The way yep. in which he's moved through the jungle, his pathing, the way in which he's been able to play around it. And also the way in which Darwin used the early game to get early information on what Inspired wanted to do so that they could then shut him down and adapt his path accordingly. Uh, just goes to show how well Darmon operate as an entire unit and how well they do enable their jungler to best set him up for success. And because of that early game, they are now 6,000 gold ahead. Inspired looking to come down here, gets the fear off, but Showmaker can just chase him down. There's the Everfrost, healing coming out. Inspired almost dies, flashes away. The spell flock's not quite enough. Larson coming in from the side as well, but here comes Canyon! And he's on the chase for Inspired. Larson underneath the tower by himself now. Inspired? I mean... Do you come back here? He's gonna start it up. He's gonna smite for some health and Showmaker and Canyon chipping away at this bot lane tier one. There's the shockwave. Here comes the crow storm as they look for Canyon, but he flashes away and Showmaker's gonna turn this one right back around. Canyon going in, helps Showmaker pick up the kill. 
The rest of Rogue left in the wings, not really able to do anything about this. Rogue are just doing what they can to try and find something. If they can get any gold into their back pocket, if they can relieve any pressure, maybe stall this game out, then there's a world where maybe they can turn this game around. But down one immediately shut that down. Great positioning from Showmaker staying just outside the range of the fiddle means that he can consistently dish out the DPS. Uh, and he's able to come out on top. Now with the Herald, they're securing themselves into the tower. Hunt Summon out looks for a 1v1. Hunt Summon's gonna cleanse it away and gets the 1v1. Flashes into the bush. First kill of the game on the board for Rogue. Not a total shutout. Larson's gonna get chased down here by Kano. Uwamne coming in from the side as well as Showmaker's gonna join the fray. Hunt Summon getting chased by Canyon. And Canyon will kill him off. One for one in the mid lane in the end. Khan trading in a 2v1. It's gonna turn back, look for the Counter-Strike. Wild Ghost coming out as well. There's the bubble. Tidal Wave connects, but Odawamne and Trimby don't want to chase into three. Down one, they have the numbers advantage there. A slightly different situation could have meant a kill for Rogue, but Khan knows the limits that he's playing in. He knows that his team is there to support him, and he doesn't even have to burn a summoner spell. So he's just creating that additional pressure that he's done so all game long. They find themselves with an eight and a half thousand gold lead. The second Drake is on the board for Dom One. And they're just gonna grab that for themselves. In the past, Europe has been on the other side of a 7-1 scoreline, but this time on the losing side of it. Damon here, total dominance this game. That kill from Hans Summer, only the only thing that keeps us away from getting perfect gamed here. Rogue will have to reevaluate how they want to play the early game because Damon have just shown that they are a cut above in every single metric this game. Let's have a look at this Axe Effect replay. Hans Summer, I think he. Oh, he just does more damage, I think. I don't even know if the Flash did anything there. I would have to watch that one again, because, uh, yeah, I needed really slow-mo for that one. Yes. I thought at first that he flashed the Flamethrower, so that he was, like, dodging that extra bit of damage, but he got hit by it. So I'm like, oh, I wonder if the Flash was actually necessary. I mean, it could just be a Lucian into a Ferios thing. I think Han Summer was ahead on items at that point. But also, he's gone um, crack and slay. Yeah. So you have that third hit too, and with the with the press the attack proc too. Uh, my expectation would be that Han Summer just went out on that one v one anyway, but he did end up losing his flash in the exchange. Still, at least it's something back for Rogue. Yep. They find themselves an 8k gold deficit right now, but better than 8.5k, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> that is the most opium I have ever heard someone huff in a single moment. Look, look at the I need to line, talk to you know? your <laughs> need to talk to your doctor because that prescription is a little bit off the charts, Betty. Rogue on the back foot once again as Showmaker Shadows Khan. Something Dom on Kia do very well as have their two solo laners in the same position to make sure that they can look for this fight. He's gonna jump across the wall and Canyon will be fine, but Canyon does eat a little bit of hurt as Inspired looks towards the bottom lane here, is on a ward and Tower should just fall in favor of Darmon. They're just working their way through the side lanes right now. Darmon know that they are so much stronger in the 1v1. Rogue are kind of forced to group like you're seeing. Larson, that's... That's yeah. an Everfrost. There's a the root. It's going to get away with the collateral damage. Shield bow. You can see the shield was there, but it wasn't quite as much <laughs> as you perhaps would expect at this moment in the game. Showmaker with his completed Everfrost. Definitely able to dish out the damage. I wouldn't be surprised to see him. Yeah, there's the Zonyas. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I think he actually could have just gone for more damage if he wanted to, but I guess by going for the Zonyas, you're really limiting the potential comeback avenues for Rogue by really making it even harder to get yourself a pick. And you can just see the gold across the board. The good news, just look at bot lane. You know, yeah, Han Summer even. ahead of gold against Ghost, and then there's also other gold uh, yeah. <laughs> that's Great. largely on the down one players. Khan <laughs> is 4,000 gold ahead right now. Uh, just to bring it into perspective, 2,000 gold lead as well for Cannon in the jungle. But yeah, bot lane's even. We got that one. <laughs> Khan, Summer, and Trimby having a good performance today. Although there's 900, so not even Trimby. Trimby's 900 yeah. gold behind. Khan, <laughs> Summer having a good performance today. And Dumb one across the board having stellar performances as to be expected from our reigning world champs. Now two minutes on the ocean. Drake, first Drake was a little bit late, so we're not going to be stacking up towards that soul before, you know, about the 30 minute mark or so, but can still look for Inspired. Has been able to sneak around here. He's going to look for a Ghost. Crowstorm, a possibility, but Cannon and Showmaker here to dissuade Rogue from pushing any further forward. Khan is not with the team, and this is one of the few options that Rogue have. They say, well, Khan is catching a wave. He's going to start pushing it towards our tower. While he's doing that, let's make a play in a 5v4, because as soon as Khan gets up towards those turrets, up towards those inhibitors, he will eat through them. 
Yes, he will, Nick. Yes, he certainly will. The problem is, even if Rogue wants to try and find these picks, the Lulu ultimate is just is going to make it so much harder. She mitigates so much of this burst thanks to her ult and her shielding. Um, that oh here we go the attempt though they're looking for ghost he does have the flash has the exhaust as well but ghost is down for the second time this game 100 percent death participation for the ad carry from Darmwan. khan coming in for the flank here oh the does have tp if he wants to join this but here comes khan counter strike cleansed away by han samatai the wave's going to try and turn it around the bubble's going to hit as well khan takes the wild growth and is pretty darn healthy through that exchange but in the end rogue able to find a kill yeah they get something and they aren't punished for it. So that's the best case scenario for Rogue. Obviously, they have not given up on this game just yet. And even though they are in a very dire position, uh, the best thing that they can do is keep looking for these picks, keep looking for small windows of opportunity where you can crawl your way back into the game. The important thing to remember is that when Darmon's looking to play around something like a Baron, like a Dragon, they're going to be grouped up and there are ways in which Rogue can leverage some of their strong team fighting tools to potentially turn it around. It's just the gold difference that they find themselves in right now. Even if they do find a good fight, they might just not have the damage to turn it around. And with the control that Darwin is showing, and I think that they're already respecting the fiddle pretty well, but you know they're going to be even more hyper alert yeah. of it now. So keep an eye on that side lane vision as Canyon has his eyes on a potential pick in mid. It does very much feel like Ghost is the only one you can catch out, and only if Beryl isn't there. Because right? if you catch on Ghost, no longer has the flash face, Squishy is an AD carry. Showmaker has a stopwatch, Canyon can jump away, Khan is an absolute monster, like he's playing Pacific Rim, not League of Legends this game with how big he is. And then Beryl has the Wild Goat in all of these, and the Whimsy as well in these sorts of situations. So Ghost's really the only one for Rogue. If they can find a pick, Khan here stepping forward. Oh, he is overextended here. Yeah, but the Counter-Strike is a Counter-Strike. And because of that, he can dash away. Dragon secured here for Darn one third of the game for them. And uh, with that, they keep that you know, 7,000 gold lead or thereabouts. Odoamne forced back by the rest of the LCK representatives. And Larson and Inspired were waiting in the wings to look to see if they could find a play. Well, I will say that Darmon have definitely slowed the game down a lot. Uh, they spent a lot of their early game advantages just securing more side lane towers, securing themselves more items. Uh, you can already see like second items completed, a lot of them working on their thirds. Um, Khan picking himself up the Warden's Mail as well to make it even harder for Odoamne and Han Sama, who are probably the two biggest threats for him sure. uh, in a side lane. And even then, in a 1v1, that's definitely not something that he's going to be particularly afraid of. But Han Sama is responding in kind by likely going for either the... Um, the... Cerildas? Uh, Cerildas. That's the one that I was thinking of. Because um, that extra slow that you get on the ultimate as well is very valuable. But now Khan has his eyes on a potential flank. They know that Odoamne is bot lane. Yeah, Rogue just pushed the wave and then back away immediately. They don't have the vision on the sides here. Khan working his way down towards the bottom lane. You can see Trimby using the bubble there just to see if anyone was waiting in that bush. And a moment ago, Canyon was there. So now Darmon continue to keep their vision line. That ward actually, just above the entrance to the red side jungle is pretty strong and Hans Summer can look for Beryl here who has to flash away, has the wild goat still. The slow flash forward from Hans Summer, third kill of the game for him. Every single kill has gone on Hans. Okay. I can hear the hopium. I can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things where Hans Summer now finds himself with three kills. That is another pick that they found onto the Darm one bot lane. They're setting up, they're not going to start the Baron. There's no way that they will start the Baron. But it's just a matter of time that they're buying Canyon. themselves. OK, Can Canyon now wants to get something back in exchange. Larson. He doesn't have stopwatch. He realizes that Canyon could be waiting oh, there. He's found him. <laughs> That's what he puts. <laughs> that, that reminds me of like, you know, when you're like, um, you open the, the cupboard, you know, you see a monster in there, and you're like, oh. Just gonna close that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, Abadaga yesterday when he jumps over the wall on Zoe. He's like, oh, there's a Mako in that bush. Okay, I'm out of here. Yep. Obviously, I will say through my, throughout my life, I've never opened a cupboard and seen a monster. But we might live very Wales, different lives. That's true. Yes. Uh, <laughs> admittedly, though, Larson was level 15, so he did have a three level advantage on that. So it probably wasn't as scary for him as we made it out to be. But I will say that 8.5k gold difference. Now, 6.5k, that's a lot better. I, I, it also feels like Darmon, as you said, have, have just not 
done a huge amount of proactive stuff. Well, they, they took the dragon, like since the early game, yeah, right, yeah, where they yeah, got yes, that yes. dominant lead, they've taken a dragon and it might just, it kind of feels like they're just saying, okay, we'll wait for Soul. In so, two minutes time, you have to fight us. In my opinion, I think that Darmon recognized that they have many ways in which they feel they outscale, sure. right? And so the thing that they have to be the most cautious of is a wombo combo hitting them when they're trying to siege. Because I will say that their comp overall is quite short range. Yeah. So when you get close to a tower against an Orianna with her wave clear, uh, against a Fiddlesticks who can be sitting in the fog of war, th that's scary for Damwon. So they've largely been playing through a side lane. But now they're kind of at a point where it's really hard for them to just fully commit. So now they're looking for flanks. That's all we're going in once again. Look at the Ghost. There's the wild growth for the damage of the Ghost as he has to flash away. Canyon and Showmaker in a good position to flank here. TP's coming in from the top lane as Oduwamne needs to get away from that counter strike to fear. Onto Khan will force him away. Rogue were the ones who engage, but Damwon able to hold them at arm's length. Hansama still on the front line here. The Enchanter in Nami helping him out. Inspired does have the ultimate, and here he goes. They're looking for Khan, the silence, the fear. It's not quite enough damage to kill off Khan, but Bevel is next on the menu. Damage coming out from Cannon as he joins the fate from the side. One for nil in favor of Rogue so far. Hansama waiting for the Ignite to off. Healed up, Showmaker a flash forward. Cannon going in as well, and the Shockwave only hits such ghost on the back line. But here comes Fiddle. One shot down, there's two, as there's Rogue winning the team fight in the mid lane. And the Wombo combo works perfectly for Rogue as Dom and Kia are wiped. Done and dusted, but Rogue, they only lose Han Summer. They win a massive team fight. They will secure the Baron. The question is, can they deny this dragon? Because with the Ocean Soul going into the back pocket, Darmwan will still find themselves in a very comfortable position. But with these death timers and with no TP, Showmaker's going to get to the objective first, but Rogue are likely going to make a beeline towards the, this, this dragon. So Khan has no TP either. He's going to have to run alongside Ghost and alongside Canyon. The, Baron, uh, the dragon has been started up, it's gone. You have to feel it's gone before Rogue can I even get there. I don't know. 4,000 HP on it, they're on their way, but yeah, Inspired is giving this up. Yeah, Trimby's right. looking for it. And that will be Ocean Soul to Darmwon. So now we're in a battle between a Baron for the next two and a half minutes and an Ocean Soul for Darmwon. Let's have another so, look at this mid lane yeah, fight. So, okay, so this it starts off with a big mistake from Khan where he's forced out of the fight immediately. Remember that he has a lot of Darmwon's gold and then Beryl investing everything ends up dying, so it's a 4v5. Now a lot of the protection for Ghost disappears. So let's have a look at how things now pan out. The flash in from Showmaker to shut down Han Summit is good, but then the fear and the positioning from Inspired flashing in, getting a three man W off means that he was dishing out so much damage on top of the shockwave from Larson means that they end up coming out on top. So just a poorly executed team fight from Dom One gives Rogue an avenue back into this game and they desperately needed it. Yes, they're still down. They're still fighting against an Ocean Soul, but that was the breath of life that they needed to be able to stay relevant in this game. Odo Omne on his lonesome here, pushing up. Showmaker once again, shadowing Khan as Khan looks for the fight. He is very strong. Three items complete, Mandarin's complete. Ghost here overstepping a little bit though as the culling hits him. Shirilda's Gudge getting the slow as well. Rogue continues to force the Dunwon Kia bot lane back. It has been a weakness for them in the past. Remember, Showmaker subbed in for that bot lane for a while during the summer season because Dunwon were having issues with it. 3,000 gold now the difference between these two teams. Rogue will take their third tower of the game. Showmaker looking for a flank. Baron buff expiring in a minute's time. So really, I think this game becomes about the Elder medic. Oh, uh, Inspired ulted. It did ult. I don't know why. I think he was looking for Showmaker, but Showmaker just stepped outside of the ring. Oh, maybe he had vision there on the, the Raptors. And in any case, that ultimate will not be available, but I don't think it really matters that much. I mean, it's already a quarter of the way off cooldown, so. Yeah, uh, but also there's nothing really that they should fight for. Ooh, this could be a window here for Damwon. Can be no flash. Just look for the Nami here. Tidal wave immediately stops Canyon Shadow Shot. There's a great Aqua Prism as well to keep Canyon at bay. Trimby knew he had to save himself. No flash on him. Han Summer could always just flash away. Khan now in a good flank position. Larson's catching the bot wave. Inspired's ultimate still half of its way off. They Rogue. know they're in there. They, they yeah, know. you've got to know. You've got to know that they're here. <laughs> Khan diving in, double stun into the wild growth. Fear back onto Khan, but the damage just isn't quite there for Rogue right now. Khan forced away. There's the Khan, and Khan will be able to jump out of it. Larson rejoining, taking the long way round. Didn't want to step into Canyon and Showmaker. 
The tower stands. Rogue got 2,000 gold off that Baron. 3,000 gold, the difference between the two teams. And Darmon Kia, after having one of the most dominant early games we have seen so far at Worlds, and now a little bit back against the ropes. So when you look at the gold here, you can see that so much of it's sitting on Hunter. Like, oh, Odo, can he? He's no, got they don't, they, yeah, yeah, they don't have a way to interrupt that unless Larson could have gotten in range to Shockwave. So they don't have to commit to that. But wow. I mean, it still feels like Rogue are really far behind. And that's because they are. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> an Ocean Soul. So that's like 5K gold worth of stats plus the gold lead. But Han Summer. What a game from yep. him, right? Like, and, and obviously, it's, it's a situation where the best thing Rogue can do is constantly look for picks. But as you said, it was Han Sama who was the recipient for all of these picks. He was three and one moving to like the 20 to 25 mark. And that just meant item after item after item. And look, he's almost at an infinity edge now. And I think that that's what Rogue won. They're sitting there saying, Han Sama, if you can get infinity it. edge before the Elder Drake, there's a real possibility that we can win this. But Back the question is, and there it is. There four it is. Items. So four items. So Han Sama is the guy you've got to watch because in the last fight, Darmon committed everything to killing him. And then the rest of Rogue ended up clearing out. But I say that the Void Staff now being completed on Larson. Level 17 for him, 16 for Han Sama, 17 for Odo Omne, With, yes, he only has two items, but he should be more relevant than he was. And even in the last team fight, he did the most damage uh, out of everyone on Rogue. So this game that felt done. Dusted. Yep. We had written it off, Medic. We thought, okay, Darm one performing just like they had been. They weren't able to leverage this huge goal lead that they had to break into the base of Rogue, and Rogue found pick after pick after pick. And it's ironic, because for anyone that's followed Rogue, it is they who have found themselves in multiple gold leads. It, they are Rogue time, you know? Yep. <laughs> um, uh, but Odo Arne said yesterday that the memes should die, and, and perhaps they can prove it today. It's, it's still a close game, but that's it. We've got a close game now. This game is going to be decided, in my opinion, by the Elder, but the Baron will spawn before it. Infinity Edge complete on Odo Wamne now as well. The only Executioners on the side, the only Grievous Wounds on the side of Rogue sits in that Chemtech Future Fire. Goes having to flash away. Hunt with a flash chase. Can he try to put the damage down? Hunt needs another auto attack, but has he overstepped? Shadow Assault coming out. The Tidal Wave's going to hit just short of Canyon. Meanwhile, Darmon Kia, three members strong, pushing in the bottom lane. They're going to well warp in. Flash away. Flash chase. Wild Rogue. There's the damage. The Shockwave does not connect. Darmon have three players down towards this bottom side while Rogue push for the base. This is the inhibitor tower at least. It's all on Odo Omne and it's five to try and defend this. The inhibitor does not fall in the mid lane for Darmon. They have forced Hansama and Trimbia head away, and they will gain an advantage in terms of inhibitors. The biggest thing here for Darmwan is that they still have all five members alive. Yes, Ghost was forced back, but that was the expense of Hansama's summoner spells. So Darmwan are just sitting pretty right now with the Elder spawning in 25 seconds. Yes, Lawson will have the teleport. Are Rogue going to try and force them? No, there's no way that they'll try and force the Baron. They don't have their mid laner available to them. He's not going to be alive in time. And Darmwan is just sitting in the enemy jungle looking for a potential pick. Darmwan found their window where they finally broke into the base. They were able to trade Han Sama's aggression for something in exchange. And now look, a lot of pings coming down into the mid lane. The Elder is now up and available. Canyon, Canyon. jumps straight into them. Shadow Assault, there's the fear as well. Other one, they tried to put the damage down, but Han Sama was not there. TP coming in from Larson. And now the battle lines are drawn. Rogue to the top side, Darmwan here to the bottom. Beryl down in the enemy jungle, down by where that red buff would be. Showmaker there as well. No flashes on either side. Only Inspired Odo and Trimby it's have their flash. Huge. Showmaker and Beryl in the perfect position for the flank. Inspired stepping in, looking for that crow storm. Canyon in the pit. Rogue stepping forward. They're going to recall. They're starting the resets. Do they not know? This is the Elder. You've got to go no, for it. No, You've no, got to no. fight for it. He has to catch the wave. That's what he's worried about. The potential backdoor from Khan and Showmaker is what Odo is really scared about. Beryl and Showmaker in such a good position for this, and they're going to watch Inspired walk straight into their waiting arms. Stopwatch pop by Inspired, and pop, he goes. Khan on the chase, Showmaker on a rampage, and now it's on Hansama, Tr Hansama Trimby, and Larson to try and fight against this, but the Elder is lower and lower and lower, and ticking down as Canyon and Ghost focus it. The Elder will be secured. The Shockwave connects, but you have to think that's the last hope the Rogue had of doing anything in this game. Hansama down. Khan kills him off. Ghost takes Larson and Trimby, the last man standing in that fight will be chased away. Odawane getting chased by Ghost as well. Damwon with a sublime, patient game as they fought and they fought and they fought. Odo will get a kill there in the end, but you have to feel he cannot defend against Carter's Showmaker. The damage has been done. Damwon have themselves the Elder Drake. 
it was close. Rogue fought back valiantly, but it will be done one to cement themselves as the victors with only one Nexus turret left. Rogue are going to fall to Dumb One. Dumb One just waited until the perfect mu moment to kill off Inspired, and because of that, they win the game. Dumb One still undefeated. The positioning from Showmaker in that final fight was perfect because, as you rightly said, it was Fiddle that was looking for the ult over the wall to be able to get into the pit and create that chaos. And Odo was like, we've been backdoored before. I have to go back to base and catch this wave because if they get us in an extended fight and they're able to TP behind us, like, we're going to lose. Yeah. Um, but the fact that they're even, even able to get themselves back into that position, so much credit needs to be given.